Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be adding a routed event to our analog clock control and this is the final product that we're going to be dealing with. So we have our clock and as the time changes we're going to be updating this text block right here. Now how are we doing this? We have this time changed routed event that we're listening to and whenever that event is fired we set the text of the text block to the time that is sent through this routed event. That's where we're going to be setting up. I'm going to be showing you guys how to define routed events. So let's get into it. Have this in a test project. Let's move over to our real project. Now, first thing we want to do, let's talk about routed events, why you'd want to use a routed event. Well, first off, it's just like a .NET event, but the same way that the that dependency properties wrap .NET properties, routed events, they wrap .NET events. And it's really, the syntax is pretty similar. So we're gonna start off here. So I forgot to go over why you'd wanna use a routed event. And really the main benefit of using routed events is that you can use them all throughout the WPF XAML visual tree. So you can use them on the element, not only just the element that defines the event, but also other elements throughout the visual tree. And I'll be showing that throughout this tutorial when we go over bubbling and tunneling by defining our routed event and we're going to be calling this the time changed event so naming convention you have your event name and then you have the word event same with dependence with the uh, dependency properties and then we're going to take our event manager and we're going to register a routed event and in this case the name of the routed event is going to be time changed. The routing strategy, we're going to call this bubbling. We're going to get in, I'm going to explain the routing strategy a little bit later. The type of the handler. So this is like the delegate that the event has, and that's just going to be routed event args. We'll get into that a little bit too, explain that. And the owner is, of course, just our analog clock. And just like that, we now have our routed event defined. But we have to set up the event that it wraps. So we're going to define this event just like a .NET event. And it's going to be time changed. Whoops. Oh, yeah, you have to define the delegate which we said would be a routed event args to open that up and add so when the event is subscribed to we're gonna add handler to our time changed event and it's just gonna be the delegate that's passed into the event and re removing the event or unsubscribing is pretty self-explanatory as well we're just going to unsubscribe from the time changed event. And I have some kind of. Okay. It's not routed event args, it's routed event handler. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to have to be changed up here. So routed event args is actually what gets passed through the delegate as a parameter. Okay, so now that we have that set up we need to fire this event and when we want to fire this event is every time our timer changes so we're going to actually define a new method for this and we're going to do a little bit of refactoring here so we're going to make this overridable in case anyone like inherits from this analog clock and we're going to call this just avoid on time change and what we're going to be passing into this event is simply the new time. We just call it time. And what we want to do is we want to raise event new routed event args and then let's look at this constructor. We have to define the event that we're raising. Well, it's going to be our time changed event. And then we also have to 
to find the source, that's just this. So it's the analog clock. And a little bit of refactoring here, so what we want to do is actually pass a time into this update hand angles instead of just calling datetime dot now. So let's change that. All these can be switched to time. And then we will call this up here and just pass in the time. So now we have this on time changed method. And let's actually add datetime.now up here for our initial setup. So looking back, this initial call to update hand angles should actually be a call to on time changed so that the time changed event is fired right when the template is applied. But now that we have this on time changed event, that's what's going to be called every time that this timer ticks instead of update hand angles. So on time changed and just the current time. So date time dot now. Okay. So we have this routed event. We're wrapping a dot not event. And then we're simply raising the event every time the time changed. So now that we have this, we've actually defined our event. Let's go into our main window here. And as you can see, time changed. And let's create a new event handler for that. And let's just test this out. So let's run the application. We should hit this breakpoint. Okay, so we hit the breakpoint. If I continue, we're going to keep hitting the break time, the breakpoint because the time is continuously changing. So now let's talk about this delegate here. So the delegate for the time changed event is a routed event handler, and as we can see, that gives us the parameters or the yeah the parameters of sender and routed event args. But this routed event args, that's just not going to do it for us. We want to be able to get the time, the current time, for that's like in our analog clock at that moment when this event is called. So to do that, we're actually going to create our own event args and our own delegate. So let's start off by adding a new. We're going to call this the time changed event args. Because we don't want these routed event args. We want something better than that. And for this, all we have to do is inherit from routed event args. And then we're going to generate all the constructors. And all that we really need is a time for this event args. So I'm just going to call this new time. I'm not going to mess with the constructors right now, so we're just going to set up this property when we when we define or when we construct the event args. Okay, so that's all we need here. And let's go to our clock. And so we don't want this routed event handler because it gives us this routed event args. We want a different delegate. So we're going to define a new delegate here. And it's going to be void. And we're going to call this time change event handler. And what we want for that is we want a sender. So we're going to we're still going to send the object that's calling or raising the event. But we want instead those time change event args, not the routed event args because we want to get that time. And we'll just call this we'll just call it args. And then let's change that for our routed event. And when we raise the event, we're no longer going to be raising routed event args. We're going to be raising time changed event args. And then we also have to set the new time for this time changed event args. So that's just going to be the time from this one time changed function. Okay. So now that we have that, let's head back into here and not routed event args anymore we're going to be doing time changed event args we're going to have to import that as well 
So now, let's set a breakpoint here. Now let's look at these args with our debugger. And as you can see, we have this new time property that we can we can do anything with it in this method. Now what are we going to do in this method? Well, we're going to take our text box and we're going to set the text to the events new time and then to string you got to format the string. Let's see. I think it's hours, minutes, seconds. Hopefully that works. And then real quick I just want to horizontal align everything. So now when we run this the time should be updating repeatedly. And there we go. The time is changing. Let's, let's actually show our second hand real quick. From last episode we actually set up this dependency property but Let's show seconds. So we can see it all in sync. And there we go. Time is changing. So I want to go over this routing strategy real quick. Right now we have it set as bubble. And what that means is that when the event is raised on the analog clock, any element that has the clock inside of it can handle the event. So the stack panel can handle it or the window could handle it. So I want to actually show that. And to subscribe to the event from a different element, you have to prefix it with analog clock. And then you can you can do your time changed. And then we're just going to set the same event handler and we're going to get rid of it on our clock. So now this should still change the time. So this this handler should still be fired. And there we go, it is. But, if I were to change this to direct, that means that only the analog clock can handle the time changed event. So now, this time is just not going to change at all. But, if I were to move it back, so let's copy that, move it there, then it should work. And our time should change. There we go. And then last but not least, we have tunneling. And that just means that anything that is inside of the analog clock can handle the event, which we can't actually do here because we haven't, our analog clock can't really have content inside of it. It's not like a stack panel can have content inside of it our clock can't. So I can't really show you that, but you always have to take my word for it. So anything inside the analog clock can handle it. Alright, so I know this video is getting kind of long, but I want to show you guys a different way that we can do this time changed event handler. Because let's look at our time changed event args, and it's really just this property here. Like, do we need a whole class for this? Well, we don't because there's a built-in way to do it in WPF. So instead of this, these event args and this handler that we have here, we can just do a routed property changed event handler. And then it's a generic class, so we need to pass in the type of the property that's changing. That's just our date time. And then let's change that up here. And... So now that we have that, let's go to where we raise the event. So instead of this time changed event args, we're going to do routed property changed event args. Again, generic property that's changing is a date time. And this constructor is a little bit different. So what it does is you pass an old value and a new value. So our old value, well, we don't really store this property. so for this example, I'm just going to say datetime.now minus one second. That might not be the best way to do it because, I mean, this could be changed. This could be called when, whenever. It's just an example, okay? <laughs> and then the new value is datetime.now, and the routed event is going to be, the heck do we call this? Time changed event. 
Okay. Alrighty. So now let's go back into this, and instead of time change event args, we should be getting a router property change event args with a date time. And then e dot it's gonna be new value instead of new time. And there we go, this should work still. There we go, okay. So it works, we don't need these time change event args. We don't need this event handler. We're just using this built-in WPF class. But I did wanna show you guys how to set up the event args in case you had something a little bit more complicated. But anyways, that's gonna do it all for today. So route of the events, pretty simple. Similar to dependency properties, actually just wrapping that .NET functionality. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, or subscribe for more.